Welcome, boys and girls. We're coming to you today from the auditorium of OSU's Extension Office in Tulsa. I am Tulsa County Master Gardener Susan. And I'm Master Gardener Debbie. And you might be wondering what a Master Gardener is. Well, Susan and I love gardening so much that we decided that we would go back to school and learn as much as we could about gardening. So we went to a program through OSU, their extension program. Here's a picture of Oklahoma State University over in Stillwater. And OSU, in addition to having teaching and research programs, also has an extension program where they take the information that they learn from their research and spread it throughout the state from the various extension offices. So we took our classes at the Tulsa Extension Office, and one of our jobs as Master Gardeners is to take that information that we learned and take it to you in your schools or online or through TV programs like this one. And we have a mission statement because we think we're magic. Master Gardeners in the Classroom is what magic stands for. And our mission statement is that magic provides high quality science education to schools in Tulsa County um, for grades kindergarten through fifth grade. Okay, we have a program for you today and it is called Six-Legged Superheroes. And we have some objectives for our program. Objectives are goals, things that we want you to learn. And we have three main goals. First one are, we want you to learn that insects have distinct body parts, insect life cycles are complete or gradual changes, and also using pesticides harms all insects. So let me show you our first superhero that we're gonna talk about. And it's just a little ladybug. And I'm getting my prop on. <laughs> Susan's got her ladybug hat. And ladybugs are very interesting creatures. You wouldn't think that they're a superhero, but they really are to us gardeners. Um, here's some pictures of different ladybugs. Ladybugs have a hard shell that protects them, and their wings are actually hidden under these shells. And why we as gardeners love them is because they eat little critters like this, little aphids, and aphids are pest insects in our garden. Now, ladybugs are cool because they can lay up to a thousand eggs in their lifetime. And there are more than one kind of ladybug. There's actually 300 kinds of ladybugs in the United States and, any, and even more throughout the world. You know, Debbie, you talked about there were 300 ladybugs. So you have to have a way to classify those different insects. And to kind of understand what it is, I'm going to mimic classification for each of you as students. So think about if you were in a spacecraft in our universe. The first thing to know who you are is to find where you are. And what we would say is look for Earth. So the very first classification, the largest, would be Earth. And then within the planet, we are in the United States. So that is a further subdivision. And then in the United States, we're in the state of Oklahoma. We're close to Tulsa. When school's back in session, you'll be in a particular school, but not anywhere in that school. You will be in your own classroom. And it's only at that point when we can identify you, the student, fully. So the reason I went through you in your classrooms is the classification of insects, in this case a housefly, is done the same way. It starts with the broadest, which is a kingdom of animal or plant. In this case, we will have an animal. Then the phylum is arthropoda, arthropoda, segmented body, jointed legs, you can see the joints, and a hard exoskeleton. And then the class is an insecta, that an insect that have three body parts, six legs, two antenna, and wings, sometimes four wings, sometimes two. Then the next we go down is the order, Diptera. It's the name of the fly. And the family of that fly could be any kind. Mus 
Masida. Muskade. Muskade. Sometimes I need help, just as you all probably will. In this case, we want two wing flies, and that's Musca, and then the species, and that is Domestica house, the name of our house fly. So you can see we had to keep on going down further and further and further to reach our house fly. Now, we just said that this housefly could be identified from the outside. And what the insect body parts, in this case, we have a head here, a thorax, an abdomen, two antennae, six legs, three on each side, and wings. So we have, you can see it from the top, the antenna the head and a compound eye, the thorax, which is in the middle, and the abdomen, and then the legs. So Susan just talked about the outside of an insect. Let's talk about the inside of an insect. The anatomy, that means the study of body parts. And let's start out with the nervous system. It has a little bitty brain. It's called a cerebral ganglion, and it has a little nerve cord that travels throughout its body. And then it also has a circulatory system, just like what we have, but a little different. It has blood vessels and actually five heart segments. And it really only has one main blood vessel that just kind of flows throughout all of its organs. Now, its digestive system is very much like ours. It has a mouth and a throat, a pharynx, trachea, Going on down to its little stomach here, it has intestines, even has a little anus where the poop comes out. So that's very much like ours, but the respiratory system, how they breathe, is a lot different from ours because we only have two nostrils, but they have a whole bunch of little holes along the side of their body called spiracles, and that's how they breathe. But I think one of the coolest parts of the insect is their eyes, and Susan can show us a picture of some of their eyes. Look at this. We have simple eyes, but insects have eyes that are a little different from ours. They, some of them have some little simple eyes like these, but they also have these compound eyes. I think this guy's a really cool one. I love the stripes in his Looks eyes. Like sunglasses. It does look like sunglasses, doesn't it? And so in our next slide, we can take a look at how our eye is different from their eye. How our, uh, our simple eyes are is we have a little clear covering called the cornea. The light goes through, it hits the lens, and in our bodies, there's some muscles that cause the lens to change shape, and so we can focus from distance to near. The light keeps on going through back to the retina, and then it travels to, from the optic nerve back to the brain. Well, compound eyes are kind of like a whole bunch of simple eyes all put together. Each of these little facets here are kind of like the cornea on the front. And then they have a little lens back in here, does not focus back and forth like ours does. And then it goes to the photoreceptors, back to the brain. Each one of these little segments is called an omotinium. And the thing that's really cool about these eyes on these insects is they are off to the side like this. And so they can see all around, front, back, up and down. And that makes a fly really hard to swat because you can see in all different directions. But they don't see very clearly. They, um, they see lots of little different images, and they mostly see motion. And so they look kind of like this. And so we're going to try to show you what it looks like looking through a fly's eye. All right, very good. Looks kind of like that, doesn't it? So, you know, when I uh, think about insects, I wonder how they grow up. I mean, are they born and they look just like they're going to, or do they change? And in fact, there are two different ways that insects grow from infancy to maturity. The first way is called incomplete change or gradual change. That means just like we do, you grow up, and you kind of look like what you're going to look like when you're an adult. You have a body, a head, arms and legs. 
And as you mature, you get bigger and bigger and bigger. So that's called a gradual change. But there is another complete change, and that's called metamorphosis. And I know you all know this from when you see a caterpillar, and then all of a sudden it turns into a butterfly. Well, that butterfly actually goes through four complete changes in their stage. When they first are born, they are an egg. They're planted on a leaf. They break out of the egg, and they start eating and eating and eating. And that's the caterpillar change. You've seen that little caterpillar. But then, at one point, they wrap themselves in either a chrysalis for a butterfly or a cocoon for a moth. And that is the larva stage. And when it's time, they break out of that wrapping and turn into either a moth or a butterfly. And that we call metamorphosis, going from completely different stages. This is a depiction of an incomplete change or gradual. You start out small, you get medium size, then you're an adult. A grasshopper is an insect that goes through this incomplete stage. It first comes as an egg that's hatched, and the first stage is called nymph. And it looks like a baby grasshopper. And then it grows and it molts or sheds its outer skin. And what comes out is the second stage nymph. It still looks the same, but bigger. It goes through another molting, a third molting, a fourth molting, and then finally it turns out after the fifth time as a, an adult grasshopper, similarly shaped and with all the appendages. So the other way we talked about was a complete change. And to depict that, we have the blue shape, that's got four points, the green shape that has six points, the red shape that has three points, each are completely different. And this is the way that monarch butterfly matures. It first comes as an egg on a leaf. It hatches, goes into a caterpillar that gets larger and larger. That caterpillar has a chrysalis that forms in its last molting, and then when it's ready, it comes out as the beautiful monarch butterfly. All right, so we've talked about several different kinds of insects, and why do we think they are superheroes? Well, there's some fascinating facts about insects. First of all, there are billions of insects in the world. There's actually 200 million insects to just one of us. So there's a lot more of them than us. And interestingly, 97% of insects are actually beneficial. They're helpers. Only 3% are insects that we really don't like. And most insects are natural insecticides in that insects that eat other insects are our helpers in the garden. Okay, so why do we think insects are superheroes? Well, they're our friends. First of all, insects pollinate plants. Here's an example of a bee with pollen on its legs. And insects travel from flower to flower looking for nectar. But they also get pollen on them as they travel. And when they move to the next plant, it helps to fertilize that plant so the plant can make seeds and fruit. Also, some helpers, some superheroes, eat other insects. We talked about the ladybug. Here's an example of a praying mantis eating an insect. And then some other insects are like natural garbage men. They turn organic matter into compost. And so if you see, say, a rotten apple or a rotten pear on the ground, and you might see it covered with flies, well, those little guys are being little garbage men, and they're cleaning up the rotting things that we don't want to have hanging around in our, in our environment. And they turn it into compost, which is very nutritious for plants. Okay, so let's take a look at some real superheroes. 
Um, some of our pollinators are in this display of Oklahoma insects. This is one of my favorites, the monarch butterfly. We also have some moths, they're pollinators. And here's some bees, bumblebee, honeybee. These are great pollinators. You know, Debbie, I've seen up at the lake sometimes some praying mantises, and this is a wonderful display. Do you remember on that earlier slide where the praying mantis was on its back four legs and then its hands were up together? And that is how it holds its insects that it's preying on. So that, that was pretty cool. And then something we haven't talked about too much, but I think we will, is um, the, what's it called? The walking stick. Walking stick, yeah. I should know that. The walking stick, I saw one on a cabin, and it actually looked like a stick st stuck onto the uh, screen porch. It was amazing. And so the walking sticks are in here. Here's a great, great big one. That is awesome. Right. They really are camouflaged, aren't they? They are. And some of our little garbage men insects are some of these little beetles. And so... Um, you might see them on the ground, even cockroaches. We don't really think of cockroaches as being a great insect, but actually they can be beneficial. So these are some that you may find in your yard. So looking at those superheroes, we are concerned that chemical pesticides kill both those good insects, remember 97%, in trying to get to the 3%. So some of our concerns is even if you spray, you may not even be reaching the insects that are the bad insects. Sometimes they hide underneath the leaves. And so unless you're down on the ground, you're not gonna get it. And on the other side, even if you sprayed the last part, insects instinctively know what to do and they hide. They'll just wait till that spray is dry, and then they come out, and they start eating again. <laughs> so what can we do if we're not going to spray a lot? And there is something that has come to be known as integrated pest management. It's called IPM for short. And what we're talking about is how do we eliminate those pesky insects without chemicals? Well, one way is pretty easy. And sometimes you can just go over and pick those little boogers up and put them in a container or a bag, and they're gone. Or if you don't want to touch them, sometimes you can just give a hard spray with your water hose, and that will knock them off. And then if you just have to use an insecticide, there are insecticides that can be targeted to a specific problem. So try to use one that is only going to go after the problem you have. And if you end up using those insecticides, then there are two times when you can do that safely, not to hurt butterflies and bees, either early in the morning when the butterflies haven't started flying, or late in the evening when the bees are all back in the hive. So spray during the day, not or don't spray during the day, but spray early or late. So Debbie, what do you think about having a little fun? Do you have a game that we can play? I do. It's called a lotto game, or kind of like bingo, if you're more familiar with that. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to read some, some little poems to you, Susan, and they describe a certain kind of insect, and then I want you to try to figure out which insect okay. it is, which picture matches with the name of the insect Ooh, on the card. The pressure's on. That's right. We're going to play blackout. All right. Here's the first clue. I look so dainty, laced, winged, and green, but to an aphid, I'm awfully mean. To them, I'm vicious as a lion. They are food that I rely on. I put so many to their end that gardeners say I'm their friend. Well, I, I got a clue on that one when you first started. You said lace wing, and mm -hmm. that's very dainty. So I believe it's a lace wing. All right, very good. 
Okay, next clue. I'm a good beetle and protect your garden from pests. I usually run faster than all the rest. You can find me on the ground under stones, logs, or bark. I like to come out when it is dark. Wow, you know, when you first started, I thought it was going to be a lady beetle, but then you said on the ground and dark. So I think it is the ground beetle. Yep, you're right. Okay, there's another beetle one. You may call me beetle, bird, or bug, which may seem to be absurd, but give me lady as title of address, and then that will help clear up the mess. There you go, my favorite. And I had a hat, too. Yes. I call it a ladybug. Some call them ladybirds, lady beetles. Different names. Lots of names. Yep. Now, when an insect near me lands, my praying hands become praying hands. Without stopping to say grace, I chew him up and feed my face. I'm much bigger than an ant is, but much smaller than a man is. Well, that one is the praying mantis. That's we just right. talked about that, so I saw those for real. Mm-hmm. All right. I don't like butter. And I'm not a fly. Whoever named me made a bad try. <laughs> when I'm not flying up too high, you might chase me when I flutter by. There you go, my favorite, the butterfly, mm -hmm. monarch butterfly. I'm busy as busy as can be, making honey for you and me. My bumbling cousin is very busy too, but she won't make honey to give to you. Wow, that's the honeybee. Mm-hmm. And there it is, right there on a flower getting its nectar. Mm -hmm. On netted wings, long and sleek, I daintily fly beside the creek. I'm a damsel, long and thin, compared to my dragon kin. For me, slow and low fly satisfies, while high and fast the dragon flies. Wow, you said the name right at the end. I did. That's I gave you a big clue. Big clue. <laughs> Couldn't miss that one, the dragonfly. Across a pond, I can glide with long legs held to my side, looking somewhat like a spider. I'm a graceful water strider. Wow, there is, you know, I have never seen this for real, but they say they can walk on water. They can. Oh, we're down to the last one. You right. know what it is, but yes. I'll read the poem anyway. I'm not a walking cane or crutch, but my name implies as much. I rest on tree limbs in open sight but I'm still hidden as if by night. My camouflage is really slick because I look just like a walking stick. There you go, our walking stick. We saw a real one of that. Well, thank you for doing that. Good that was game. fun. Good game. job. Okay, so let's see if we met our goals today, met our objectives. Did we learn that insects have distinct body parts? We I think did. We did. And we talked about the insect life cycles. They're either complete or incomplete. And we also learned about pesticides and how they can harm all insects, even the good guys, when we only want to harm the bad guys. So we want to thank you so much for attending our program today. We hope you learned a lot about insects. And I hope you will go out and look for insects in your yards or your gardens. Thank you. Superheroes. <laughs> <laughs>
working in the school program is great with the kids. We have one program that the kids absolutely love and it's all about worms. We measure two and, and mine was seven feet long. They always have questions, which is exciting. Some of them I can't answer. And I think, oh, that's a good question. I'm gonna go look that up. <laughs> and uh, hopefully they'll do the same. When I ask for help, they help me and they're really nice. That sometimes it's fun to go in there because the girls are more apt to play with the worms than the boys are. Worms are special things. They need to be in the grass so that they could survive. They're cool. I'll put them in the butterfly garden. There's a lot of joy in just giving back to the kids. OSU Extension Center, we are an extension of the university. We're volunteers and we reach out to the public to help them with their gardening, their lawns, their trees. I saw this class in the newspaper and I thought, I may like to do that. One thing I like about this is we're university-based information. So when you talk to the Master Gardeners or the Extension Office, you know you're getting kind of fact-based information. I think if anyone would want to get together with people who really enjoy digging in the soil, that this would be the perfect place to start. That is an important job. They do good. There's a lot of joy in just giving back to the kids. We got to learn how it eats and how slithery it goes. We're sharing the wonder of nature, and I think it kind of spurs them on to do some other learning. We love to beautify the community. That's a lot of what we do. There are two areas in town, Brookside area and down by the Blue Dome area, where plants are put in and maintained to help beautify Tulsa. Every spring and fall we plant and hopefully when they see our pots they know it's Tulsa Master Gardeners that help make it happen. This is coming together. <laughs> Makes me feel good to help somebody else. It's a beautiful experience. When people come in and shop with us on the day of sale, they come to pick up their pre-orders, but when they go in to our enormous amount of plants, they have all the expertise of Master Gardeners right at their fingertips. It's been just a great, great tour. I love the variety. I think this house in particular could be in many, many global magazines. The statistics were put together. Our 400 plus master gardeners volunteer enough that we equal 17 paid employees. People that call in and have a specific gardening problem. We have people walking in with twigs and bugs and they want to know what it is. I like the activity. I like being busy and having something to do. You know, if it brightens someone's day or, you know, somebody learns something, then that's a plus. We've done a lot of different things and hopefully we'll just continue to spread out and do more.